like me, then you probably want to do your research on your upcoming property, especially if this is your first one, or if you have already bought properties, this could be a good refresher for you on five tools that I use to perform due diligence before I extend an offer. Now, I've been buying real estate for almost 15 years. I can tell you right now, yes, this baby face will trick you, but I'm almost 40 years old and I have made a lot of mistakes along my path in buying real estate. And so here are the five tips that I would suggest you use the next time you go and buy that property before you extend an offer go through some of these portals and get data, get information on what you're buying before you actually extend the offer. So let's go through number one, which is zoning. Now, every county has some type of zoning map that allows you to pull either a GIS on that location and it tells you what type of zoning that property is located within. And it might even tell you future zoning of what that property might look like it will be in the future. So for example, if you were to buy, let's say Miami-Dade County, you'd be buying a single family family home. It's in a GIS map. You pull up the GIS map and what do you find? You find that it's zoned single family, but you can also pull a future zoning map on it through the GIS system. And it allows you to see this property might even be zoned duplex triplex in the near future. So that may be a really good investment for you to take advantage of. Now, the previous owner that you're buying it from, they may not know this. So they'd be selling it at the same value of a single family home, but you're getting the benefit of a future zone duplex or triplex. That's a really good investment. Now, there might be properties that you might want to buy, but they are never going to be rezoned and they stay single family and then continue to be single family. This isn't going to be the best investments unless you're looking for just to buy a single family property. And that's okay. Number two is official public records. Every county has an official public record website, which you can use to find all of the data behind that property. So for example, if you want to find mortgages or liens, if you want to find any violations, if you want to find the owner's information, if you want to find any lawsuits that are pending on that owner, this is all public record information that can be found in the county records department. This department is giving you this information 100% for free. You can very easily get this right from the county and it can be instant either online or it could be requested by phone and sent to you through email, whatever you prefer. Number three, it's going to be the appraisal department. Now the appraiser's office goes through and takes a look at the value of the property and gives an assessed value. And they put this in their appraisal website. Now, every county has an appraisal website, which you can easily go to, and it condenses all of this information that I've shared with you so far, which is number one, it shares the zoning. Number two, it shares landlord or owner information. It shares three, the taxes and the tax rule, and it also shares the assessment information. It then also, big thing, it validates for you the square footage that is actually being reported and legal and it also accurately provides information on how many bedrooms bathrooms that are legally added inside of that property as well so this is a very important piece of your investment process is going through the appraisals office website so that you can find out the accurate information about this property before you extend an offer okay so so far we've covered GIS zoning second we've covered official public records third we've covered appraiser fourth we want to go through code enforcement code enforcement is so important because code enforcement tells you if there's any open permits or if there's already been permits that have been pulled in the past for any specific work that's been, been done. The other thing is that code enforcement tells you whether there's any open permits at current that are potentially violations. And it can also even share violations with you as well if there has been permits that haven't been requested. And because of that, the city has provided some type of notice or fine to the property. Now, this is really important to know because if you're going to do construction on a property and there's already a permit that's open, you might not be able to perform any work until that permit gets closed out. Or if you're trying to buy the property and the permit's still open, you might not be able to buy it until the property title has cleared the violation that was pending from the open permit. These are very important things to look for. So number four is code enforcement. Number five is an inspection report. Now you can order an inspection report through a third party inspector and they can come out to the property and they will do not just a full inspection, but they'll also do either a four point and a mitigation if you ask them to do it. This is also for insurance purposes. So if you're going to go buy a property and you want to get insurance for it, you're going to need a four point and a mitigation inspection. Now, this inspection process is really for you. It is for your peace of mind. And it's also so you can share it with the insurance agent that's going to appraise and give you an insurance quote. Now, without an insurance quote,
control, you can't take that back to your lender so that they can approve you for the financing. You need the insurance quote, and the insurance quote will only be provided if the property passes inspections. Now, this is one of the most important pieces about buying real estate, because without a proper insurance quote and without a proper inspection report, you're never gonna get the financing, which means you can't buy the property. Now, let's go back really fast on the inspection report. What do we actually inspect? Number one, the big ticket item. So you're gonna look for the roof. You're gonna look for the, sh the lifetime value of the roof. You're gonna look for the HVAC system. How long does that have left? You're gonna look for plumbing. Is it cast iron? Is it rusted? Are there issues with it? Is it up to code? These are very important things. You're also gonna look at the electrical, cloth wire. Is it PVC pipe? These are things that you wanna be aware of because if you buy a property that doesn't pass these inspections, doesn't pass code, it can be a big problem for you when you have to go renegotiate it with the seller. They may not wanna renegotiate it or the city might allow you to, for example, pass the inspection process, you can get the quote, you can get the financing, but then ultimately later on, in order for the things to work properly inside of this property, you may need for those things to be upgraded like for example the hvac system you might have an old hvac system that passes inspection but barely and then you'll need to end up upgrading it because the property gets a little warm for the tenants inside of it and since the tenants are warm they might be upset and if they're upset they're not going to want to pay rent or live there very long these are things that you as a new buyer new owner and an investor should be aware of when you go buy real estate so these are really five big key takeaways that i look at when i am buying buying real estate and performing my due diligence prior to closing on the property. I hope you enjoyed this video so that it can shed some light on how to be a proper real estate investor, how to do things the correct way so that you can be in the money. You can make all of the returns possible that real estate can give you, but without doing the right things, it's going to be very difficult to get the best returns. All right, if you like this video, please subscribe and I will see you on the next one.